Hi everybody, welcome back. Today I'm going to share with you my thoughts on the Cartier JUC bracelet. I bought this bracelet a couple of months ago and I've been wearing it every day so I am ready to tell you my thoughts about this bracelet. So in this video, I'm going to give you a really quick overview about it and then I'm going to tell you what I love about it, what I don't like about it. I'm going to also share with you why I decided to pick it up and why I decided to pick up this model. And finally, we'll end by a little bit of advice uh, from me if you're thinking about getting this bracelet. Before we dive in, if you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Kat. I love everything to do with luxury from luxury handbags, skincare, makeup, and my new obsession, luxury jewelry. Well, you're in the right place, so I hope you subscribe. And for everyone else, let's get started. This Cartier JUC bracelet is in yellow gold, and the size that I got is in size 15. I bought it in the regular size, so not the size small, which is has a flexible bend. The version that I have still has the clip at the bottom that allows you to open and close the bracelet at a hinge. I have a reveal of this item as well, so I'll link it up here and in the description section below. I told by my essay that the way to wear this bracelet is for the nail head to be facing outwards, so towards your fingertips and the sharper part of the nail to be inside. So I was speaking to a Instagram friend and she said that, you know, this one, the nail head on the outside to kind of like prevent bad vibes, <laughs> like feng shui. So I said, okay, anything, I will just listen to it. The only issue is that it might cross over, but either way, if you wear it, you know, nail, uh, bottom of the nail facing out, it will still cross over. But this is the recommended way to wear the bracelet. This bracelet makes me feel so bougie. I know I love my expensive things, but seeing this roll on my arm made me realize, OMG, I love my expensive, shiny things. Yes, the answer of why I love it is plain and simple. This is my super official, super snobby, look at me, look at what I got, luxury pleasure, and I am obsessed with it. The whole stack that I have is my guilty pleasure, and I just love it. Feelings and obsessions aside, let's talk about practical day-to-day -day usage and what I don't like about it. Number one is the fact that it does leave dents on your arm. So this was one thing that I think most people shared, how you know when it rests on your arm, it does leave an indentation on your arm or your wrist. Now, a lot of people say it hurts, which is why they don't like it. Now, for me, it doesn't hurt maybe because it's pretty loose on my arm. Now, I have the one in size 15. Because the JUC is slightly bigger than the Love bracelet, always buy it in one size smaller. Now, I have a very, very small and tapered wrist. And because of that, even if I was wearing a size 15, you can see there is actually a lot of gap between my wrist and the bracelet. So even though it does leave dents on my arm, it's not resting on my arm the entire time so I don't feel like it's pressing or hurting me. So the only time that I feel like the dents are a little bit more painful and I'm putting that in inverted commas is when I'm sleeping. So when I'm sleeping maybe I'm resting on my arm and and maybe I'm sleeping on my arm and the next day I wake up with some dents kind of like indentation um, because of the nail head into my arm. Does it hurt? I guess it feels like any other thing. Like maybe when you sleep and you rest your ear on your earrings and it wakes up, you know, you get feel like, ooh, something has been pressing on my skin and it kind of hurts then. So that's one occasion. The other occasion where the dents do sort of hurt is actually when I do my gym. Now, this maybe may not be applicable to everybody, but when I go to the gym and I actually don't take this bracelet off, I wear it throughout the class uh, and I teach boxing. So I do body combat and I teach weights and all. So I actually wear a wrist guard over this bracelet. And because the wrist guard is tight, that's when I get a constant like pressure on the bracelet on against my skin. So in that sense, yes, it hurts. I can feel like it's being pressed into my skin. So that's something that I don't like about it. But on like this, like when I'm not doing anything, you know, I'm not sleeping, I'm not, you know, running around, not doing my gym, 
it doesn't hurt. The second thing that I don't like about it, and I think it will only be applicable if you have more than one bracelet on your arm, is that it does cross over. So when it crosses over, I feel like that's when I have to kind of like roll my wrist to uh, detangle everything. I could probably avoid this issue and not have this as a dislike if I don't wear so many things but because I do, they do kind of like get tangled and I have to like do this and when I do this, the nail hit sort of hits my own skin and I'm, I'm using the word hurt very very loosely but yeah, you can feel like something's like, you know, clanking on your skin so that's probably something that you will realize if you have a stack like more than one even though they are you know a good match in size they still do overlap you know there are days that they will just overlap like this and do they scratch each other i think they do but not so bad that you think you know it'll be all no longer shiny they do scratch each other and i think that's something you have to accept the third thing that i don't like about the version that i have i only realized it after i watched Gina's video as well as I believe it's Jerusha's video. The version that I have is the one with the more loose hinge. So I believe Cartier makes their bracelets in Italy and Switzerland. And the versions that are made in Switzerland, I could be wrong, but I believe Switzerland is the one that has the more loose hinge. If you get the ones that are made in Italy, they have a tighter hinge. Now there are horror stories about this bracelet you know, dropping off and, you know, people losing it. And I'm, I'm already very scared of that. Let me just tell you, there has been a couple of times this bracelet flew off my arm while I was teaching body combat. Yes, even though I was wearing the wrist, I think I was punching so hard that somehow it must have been rolling, you know, pressing the other bracelets. It unhinged and it flew off my arm. So until today, I haven't figured out how that happened, but that's a story from another time. So yes, the loose hinge is a little bit more scary. Um, however, once it clips in, it's actually quite solid. So I wish I knew that there was this tighter hinge version. So if you're thinking about getting this bracelet, go and check out Gina's video or Jerusha's video. I believe the ones that are made in Italy have a tighter hinge. You know, it doesn't mean that it's a different quality, it's just the way it's made. So if I knew, I'd probably get that. But otherwise, the locking mechanism is actually very solid. The final thing that I don't like about it is the fact that the smaller size is the size 15. I am unaware if there was a size 14, 13 or anything more, anything less. Because size 15 as the smallest, for people like me who have a very small tapered wrist, it's still actually a little bit too big. So I wish they made a smaller size. Um, I would probably have gotten the smaller size because when I roll the wrist, it does, I mean, when I roll the bracelet, it still goes around the whole wrist. It rolls around and that's just because I am very, very thin on my arm. Let me show you what I mean by a small wrist. As you can see, the bracelet is just really loose on my wrist. And you know, I can actually spin it around my wrist I'm not using much force and if you're actually if I'm actually like rolling and twisting my arm vigorously it will just spin around my wrist of course now you can see I'm like pressing but you know if I was like just turning my wrist it will spin and as you can see there's a lot of space between my wrist and the bracelet so the thing that I don't like about it is I wish they did do smaller sizes. I believe that's why some people prefer to go for the thinner version which has the flexible bend rather than go for this because the flexible bend uh, thinner version uh, fits a smaller wrist better. So if you've been following me for a while, the Cartier JUC has been in and out of my wish list for a while. One time I wanted it and then suddenly, I think a year ago, I decided, nah, I'm not going to spend this kind of crazy money on this piece of gold and it's solid gold because goldsmiths could come up with much more um, interesting designs while being so much cheaper because this is definitely premium for just this a little bit of gold. My mom knew that I spent so much money on a bracelet like this. She would bring out her rotan and she would she would give it to me. So the truth of why I decided to jump on it this year is definitely social media influence. Seeing 
the numbers of unboxings really sparked my interest on getting it again and hearing the price increase this year sort of no actually it 100 percent tipped me over the edge nobody forced me and i take full responsibility on my irresponsible spending but that's the honest truth i bet if i was not watching so any social media unboxings or instagram i would probably still put this on the back burner but i jumped on it i decided to go for this model instead of the smaller thin version because i always liked chunkier things. I'm not really a very dainty girl, quite tomboyish. And even though it looks extremely large on my arm, it, because like I said, I have a very thin arm, it looks like kapow, boom, wrist, boom, nail. Even though the thinner version did look actually more elegant on my arm and it did look a little bit more matching, this one stood out for me. So that's why I ended up still getting this version. This was the version that I always wanted in the first place. But yes, you know, when I tried it in store, I can tell you the smaller version did look a little bit more elegant. The reason that I went for the solid gold version is because I have experience with this kind of flexible bracelet. This is my Tiffany & Co. Uh, T bracelet, which is solid gold. Um, but it's also very similar to the JUC Small. And this is actually a hollow bracelet. And it's actually very bendy, very flexible. I think the one from JUC or from Cartier is a little bit not as you know flexible, but it has the same kind of mechanism. I have had this bracelet when I'm wearing it here get caught in maybe when I'm pulling my t-shirt up, pulling my sports bra over and things like that, and it gets snagged. And as I pull any items off, or as I pull anything items off my arm, it gets snagged and it, how would I say, it over twists out of shape. And as you can see, I, you know, it's, it's no longer in line. I have to kind of like twist it back, but it's never exactly the way it is the first time I got it. With this bracelet, I know I made a good choice because there was this twice. I was wearing a t-shirt and one time with my sports bra and I was pulling it on. A part of that clothing got hooked at the nail right here. And I was just pulling and I could feel like my nail, the nail part being like hooked up, but not hard enough for me to damage it because I felt it and I was like, oh my gosh, what did I do? So I knew that if I got the thin version and because I'm always like, you know, in a rush and just, you know, I'm, I'm arms are always moving. I know I would snag it and I would actually damage the bracelet. So this, it's so tough that it's, it can't be bent. Whereas for bracelets like this, if you pull it, look, if I pull it, it gets like snagged like that. So I also do know that if you damage the small JUC too significantly, if it gets, you know, over twisted out of shape, it cannot be repaired or I think you need to send it back for major repair at Cartier. So I knew myself in that sense. So I ended up saying, you know, I'm going to pay for the, I'm going to pay the higher price because I get that security and just that comfort that I'm not going to be the one that's going to destroy the bracelet. If you're thinking about getting this bracelet, my advice to you is to try it in store. It is so important to wear the bracelet on your arm with the accessories that you usually wear it with. So my key accessory is not really my love bracelet. My main bracelet that I have on my wrist and for the past 20 years has lived here is this nomination bracelet that was gifted to me for my 21st birthday. This bracelet had to be the one that um, stays on my wrist and anything else needs to, needed to be added to it. If you have other bracelets or things that you wear on your hand, it's important that it matches because you don't want to be taking this bracelet off too often. This movement of taking in, taking off is not good for the bracelet. So that's why I actually wear it all the time. I don't remove it unless for this video and before this video, I actually don't really take it out. So because of that, you should be wearing this bracelet a lot and it should be worn with the bracelets that you wear all the time. Of course, if you don't wear anything else, then that's fine. But definitely, I try it in store. 
uh, thick and thin, diamonds, no diamonds, try everything and just feel it, feel it on your arm before you buy it. That's like 100% must, must do in store. My second advice is easier said than done, but really don't look at the price. I was tempted to get the thinner version because it is cheaper and it did look elegant on my arm, but when I tried the thick version, I just felt like, wow, I love the slightly weighted feeling and it's sort of like almost like an opposites attract like such a skinny wrist just looks overly large and it just looks so good and it was obviously so much more expensive but I knew that if I just looked at the price and got the thinner version just to get a JUC I would still end up always wanting this and wishing that I got the version that really made my heart sing so yes it's easier said than done you know probably had to save a little bit more or much more but go for the one that you want whether or not it's the thin version the yellow gold the rose gold the one with diamonds go for the one that when you try it on you go yes that is the bracelet i want because that is the one that you will get your the most wear you will get your most you know value for money because you will just love it third and final advice to you is to actually consider the resale market so my love brace my love bracelet is actually a resale purchase. I got this second hand for just a slightly above uh, like 50%, so it's a very very good price and I've paid I mean I've gotten a lot of wear out of it and then I decided to go in store. The in store experience is you know, it's great. I wouldn't say it's like oh, mind-blowingly amazing that I will remember it for all my life. I will remember it, but obviously I don't think it's like an Hermes, you know, in-store experience. If you're just going for the look, you probably could find these items at a good deal in the resale market. But be warned, there are so many imitations, there are so many good fakes out there. So be very, very, very cautious if you are going into the resale market because once you go into the resale market and you buy something that's so expensive and you find out it's fake, it's just a whole different, oh my gosh, just so much issues. But you know, if you're good at finding things in the resale market, my third advice to you is actually to look there because these things don't really hold their value like a, a very classic Chanel bag you probably can get some discount and some savings if you buy uh, from a reputable reseller. Let me just end by saying that this has been an amazing purchase. Whatever I said about, you know, I don't like about it, the hinges, you know, the dents and all, really I am nitpicking at the bracelet. Having it on my arm right now, I am converted. I know now why people love jewelry um, in general, there is so much selfish pleasure on having these things, <laughs> this superficial, extremely expensive, probably no value to anybody else but me kind of things on my arm. There is this satisfaction and guilty pleasure on just admiring this, this gold things, the silver, gold, you know, platinum items on my arm. And I with this bracelet, it just makes me feel so good. I love it, I enjoy it, I enjoy wearing it, I enjoy just feeling it on my arm. So I would absolutely buy it again, and I absolutely, as a luxury lover, recommend it if you are thinking about fine jewelry. So just rounding it off and telling you that I am obsessed right now. I have you know, starting to roll down a very dangerous, slippery slope of fine jewelry. It is definitely very different from buying handbags, buying shoes and, you know, other luxury things. Fine jewelry is really, really something to be just, you know, seen and enjoyed and just felt. So yeah, that is how I'm rounding off and ending this video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you want to, and hit the notification bell as well. Everybody, please take care, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!